going to be a great new venue. Um, you know, I, I ran into trouble a couple of times. We were with GoToMeeting and and uh, go to webinar and had a room, but it maxed out at 100. And uh, last time I did Demons and the Golden Dawn, people were getting kicked out and couldn't get back in. And there were a whole bunch of people that couldn't get in. So mm -hmm. we, we, we moved. So this is supposed to have unlimited attendees. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll talk about oh, it. Mark, you, he's in Las Vegas. Oh, right, right. Wonderful. Okay. It is. Yeah. That's funny. It's uh, yeah. It's interesting the way uh, we've been running into local people here. Tell us, okay, how was it going? Have you found your Have you found your um, special place yet? Oh, good. No, you haven't. Okay, is there what's getting in the way of you finding that or or, or, or starting? Maybe we can help you overcome what's standing in the way. Hopefully. I hear a lot of crickets. I do too. Maybe they get kicked out again. I don't know. It says they're here. In the meantime, um, do you have any questions about anything? Oh, I see. Well, uh, if every place you go, you find that there's too many people. Okay. So, hmm. Do you have a car? You can be alone in a car easily, and you can well, take it someplace of, where there's no people. Right. Well, kind of like a cookbook, but it's more than a cookbook. Uh, the way you want to follow things is it's an outline. When you say, I'd like some fried rice, okay, wow, that opens up a whole realm of possibilities. Do you want duck, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, squid? It's all fried rice. It's, our, our manual works very much the same way. What we teach you is the basic format so you can dress it up the way you want. So you can follow it like a cookbook, but that's really not how you're going to learn the magic. That's going to make you a dabbler. If you really want to get proficient in magic, what you need to do is look at the overarching structure. How is this particular spell or this particular section that you're working on, how does it... Mm. How do the mechanisms function? For example, in Chinese cooking, you want to have a balance. You want to play opposites off of each other. If you're going to do something sweet, you want to do something sour, sweet and sour. You also have hot and sour as contrast. There's experimentation that can happen. The way we teach magic is very much the same. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, also my two cents, um, and that would be that, okay, the 49 spells bonus, yeah, you can use like a cookbook, uh, and you can also extract any spell that you, that, that you find interesting in the, uh, in the historical survey that we go through and use that alone, but the point is that the, the, the historical survey is not set up really like a cookbook, but it's set up more like an interactive universe interactive university lab mm -hmm. so that the exercises build one on the other so i would really suggest that you go through the course and you work it from beginning to end sorry mm -hmm. no no that's a good idea and i was going to um mention what richard had said uh yes walking by the river uh, near town is a good idea. Great idea. You know, sometimes you can find solitude in unusual places. Um, one of the places where I have gone here in our town for some public solitude, I guess is what you would call it, uh, we have a number of parks. And I have noticed that in those parks, there's always, you know, there's little quiet cubby holes carved out of the shrubberies. And Honestly, that's, well, under an overpass works out very well, too, so long as you're not going to get confused with a homeless person and get ticketed or arrested. That, that's the only caution I would put there. Um, uh, another place that you can go that a lot of people don't think of, if there is an abandoned shopping district in your area, there's going to be a place where they used to keep the dumpsters, and it'll be a, 
a rectangle like this made out of concrete block so that it has one opening that and sometimes in a in an abandoned shopping district you can find like little enclosures like that that can be really good and useful <laughs> right. I know it's well, you know, I've tried to think of everything because um, I grew up out in the country. So if I wanted a private place to go, I had my choice of an honest to goodness cave. I could go to a coal mine. I could climb a tree. I could go back and holler or by a creek. Um, once I got to the city and started looking for those same things, that's when I found abandoned business districts, uh, especially in, you know, like I was in Omaha, Nebraska, where they had a very old industrial district that was first created in the 1800s. And so, man, some of those cubby holes were cool. Um, you could also talk to a business owner. Um, that was one of the things, again, I did in Omaha. I had a friend who had a business, and she let me borrow a piece of her basement. Um, I told her I needed to store a couple of things down there. She said, no problem, bring the boxes. And I would just, you know, bring a box that had all my ritual stuff in it. And then I'd say, oh, I'm going to be down here in the, with my storage stuff. Rent a storage unit. Lots of people rent storage units. That's another possibility. Time. You know, um, uh, when uh, I first started um, with, the, with Golden Dawn Magic, was uh, I was living in Sweden at the time. And we were living in, you know, Stockholm, which is extremely crowded and very difficult to find living spaces and stuff like this. And yet I managed to find in the basement of this apartment building, this really abandoned place. I mean, in behind a couple of the storage <laughs> units and it was perfect. I mean, it was like, it was really. Oh, Texas, you're going to find all kinds of stuff. All you have to do is go find an old oil derrick that doesn't happen to be running, throw a quilt over it, and you pow, instant private space. Well, and I wasn't <laughs> kidding earlier about the car either. Exactly. You know, in fact, the big most privacy most people have these days is in their car. If you look on the highways, almost every car has only got one person in it. So you're alone when you're in the car. So you have your special place where you know you have privacy because you're going to have to drive to work every morning, for example or home mm. i know traffic may not be the most conducive to the sort of work we're doing but it depends on what kind of work you're doing <laughs> well, the nice thing about a car is that you know it's an enclosed private space that you can take and park anywhere too so well it's climate controlled it's got a, a sound system it's right. comfortable yeah you no got reason why you can't do magic anywhere. lots of things in there you can add some of your own symbolism in sure. addition to that now some other things um so how how I'm looking at the book now. <laughs> so I'm curious, how deep into the book have you gotten so far, or how deep into the classes? And what do you think of the classes? You know, we spent a long time filming and editing and putting all the material together. Do you like the way it's presented? I've been a very conservative, nosy people. Oh. Hey, you know that's okay. Yeah. That's really okay. Um, there are ways to make what you do seem so milquetoast perfectly. And what you are doing is, of course, perfectly innocent. But um, like the, I, I bring up Omaha, N Nebraska for a reason. Um, College sounds like you're good. Where's Mark? Did we lose Mark? I haven't heard anything from Mark at all. Yeah, he's been real quiet. Well presented so far, working oh, on the working three on figurines. The band, yeah. Hey. hey, you're moving in. Yeah, yeah. That's He's getting great. right along. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Good. Very I'm glad good. to hear that you're actually working the course and not just watching it and putting it off on the shelf because there's really a lot that you can learn from this course if you work it. Right. Okay. So as far as camouflaging what you do, uh, I can give you some hints on that. Having been raised in southern West Virginia, I can tell you how a witch can hide. It's not <laughs> It's not as hard as you might think. It, really, all it requires is a simple glamour spell. You put a glamour spell on what you're doing, and so when people see you, they see the glamour instead of what you're doing. They see that you're gardening, or you happen to be admiring uh, a piece of art, or you know what you're doing looks different from what you are doing, 
because of the glamour spell you have cast over yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you want to talk a little about glamour spells, <laughs> um, we can do that too. Another thing is, um, you know, I've coached a lot of people uh, in Golden Dawn Magic over the years, and actually this is a question that, that, that comes up quite a bit. I mean, because, you know, Golden Dawn Magic is a kind of magic where you need some space and you make some noise and, um, you know, you want to create an atmosphere with some incense and some magical tools and uh, some special lighting and, and you want to be able to vibrate some names and all of these things, and not everyone has access to that. and this is a big impediment for a lot of people. And I tell them, well, you can always do it purely in visualization. That's another possibility. Um, when you're wanting to conceal your work or needing to conceal your work and you absolutely have no other place to go and there's yes, no Richard. other no other way, sorry? Richard says he plays guitar and he can use that as a cover. Perfect. It's absolutely That's perfect. That's a great idea. We can even show you how to make your guitar playing magical. Yeah. So that you can cast spells with the guitar. I mean, yeah. musicians always cast a certain kind of spell if they want to make you feel in love or they want to make you feel happy or like you want to dance, you know. That's part of the magic of music. But you can also fine tune that a little bit and do more things. Mm. So that would be mm. a great thing for you to explore. Yeah, and you always can do certain part of your work in your in, in, in visualization. I have people even divide, you know, uh, there are people I know that are perfectly capable of doing an entire lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram just in the visualization. Mm -hmm. Vibrations and everything. Mm -hmm. Do it all, it's riding on the bus. No one will ever know. Yes. We never uh, suspect. It's part of mental training. You know, they say that these days the average American has an attention span of approximately the same as a goldfish. Now, I really goldfish. do a goldfish. I don't personally believe that. I think they like to tell us that we're more stupid than they than we actually are, so that maybe we'll behave that way. Um. What is this? <laughs> Music casting spells. Yeah, this is a great idea, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can do, especially if you're, um, you know, making electronic music and sampling and things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, the magic of music is, is is an interesting thing. Yeah, it is. It really is. I do magic with my cooking. I use a lot of the same principles that we teach, but I've adapted them to the kitchen. So if people are in a bad mood, I can go into the kitchen and literally whip up some happy and <laughs> feed it to them. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and change the entire. She's mood. good with the kitchen witchery. Trust me. <laughs> so, so have you cast any? If you're if you're already making uh, figurines, then you've cast at least one spell. Have have each of you cast at least one spell yet? I hear the crickets again. I know the crickets again. You don't. You should kick in to kill people, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Does does uh, no, high blood can... pressure count from too much bacon grease? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good, good. Okay, so mm, let me ask you this. Maybe let's try it one step further. What spell has been your most successful? What's been your most successful spell? Have you had spells that any spell that works? Have you tried any of the spells from the Forty Nine Spells? How about that? Yeah, because those are the you know most people. Those will work. Those work instantly. You can just dive right into that. You don't even have to know how to spell your name in order to get those accomplished. Okay, most of the problem. Oh. oh no. Right, so life got in your way, Richard. Well, you know what? Here's the truth of it. Wow. It sounds like, at the very least, it's good that you have it so that you can cast some protection spells on you and the rest of your family. Right. I hope you're doing some protection spells because it sounds like like you all kind of need them. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. Use use some protection spells right now. Definitely. You know, and don't, spells. don't, don't, don't pressure yourself. I mean, you know, look. 
you you own the course you now have it it's always going to be there and you don't have to rush through it but if you just want to watch the, the the whole course and 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 you know and work the spells later because life is in the way it's not going anywhere right you know this is magic is powerful yes but it's not powerful like oh, good. chemistry interesting coincidences ah uh, good 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 yeah it's it's not like chemistry if you make a mistake you're not going to blow yourself up okay <laughs> so you know go be gentle with yourself as you're learning the magic you know some days you're going to pick stuff up faster than others and maybe you won't pick up something for a whole month it's okay well good richard now now oh, let's let's talk about these spells no, that no, Marcus no, tried. Now, now wait a minute. We, we, we will. We're gonna we're, we're gonna get into that. But be, I I can't just let that go by, because you know you're not gonna blow yourself up. Fine. You're absolutely right about that. But you can step your toe. <laughs> yeah. And there's there's no such thing as magical whiteout. Just remember that. Right. I mean. You know, because okay, so the easiest way. Casters to think remorse. It, forget about that. It won't work. No. Okay. So. The way I think of it to help keep me on track with my spell casting, I understand that my life is a thread because I'm a three dimensional creature and I'm required to experience time in a linear fashion. Okay, understanding that, I know that on the thread of my life, each spell I cast is a little knot. It's a little place that when I go back over my life, even with my eyes closed, I can feel those places where I have consciously tried to make a change. Now, can you put two or three knots on top of each other? Yes, that creates a bigger change. If you put a knot in one place and it made your string too short, can you put a knot place someplace else to make it a little longer? Yes, if you tie on another thread. Do you see the analogy I'm making and how that will apply to your magic? Okay. Thanks for your kind attention. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. bye.